Dear students, let us start the discussion on 22nd November 2016 newspaper. The first article is related to the rail safety in India. So Indian Railways is frequently prone for the rail accidents and most of the cases these rail accidents are related to human errors. So if we can improve the automation of the rail signaling system and provide for the standard operating protocols, we can definitely reduce these human errors. On rail safety, various committees were appointed. One is Anil Kokodkar Committee and Restructuring of the Railways, Bibek Debrai Committee and Sam Pitruda Committee on Upgradation of the Rail in India. None of these recommendations have been followed. If you take the Anil Kakodkar Committee's recommendation, it has clearly stated that uh, the railways are at the verge of bankruptcy due to non-revision of the uh, prices of rail tickets for a very long period. And Bibek Debrai Committee also has recommended for upgradation of uh, rail coaches and also improving the account standard of uh, accounts standards of Indian railway systems. So in this context, um, let us take the Anul Anil Kakodkar Committee's recommendation. It says all the man crossings have to be systematized with a huge cost. And the second thing is, we also need to introduce end-to-end -end signaling system as like European train control systems. And if you take the Japanese system, that is, it is called Shin Kansen system. Here, there is zero accident rate in the last two decades. So, India can bring in the same technology. On the other side... The criticism is growing on Indian railways uh, for losing focus. Today, the Wi-Fi and then uh, bullet trains added to that catering services. Uh, with, with this, there is an improved focus. But the rail safety and functionality of uh, rail infrastructure, these are being totally ignored. Now, here I need to talk about um, the depreciation reserve fund. So, this fund is necessary to maintain... Uh, or to replace the aging uh, roll and stock in the railways. But however, this the fund allocated has been decreasing over years. So it is estimated that around 20,000 crore annually is, recommend, is necessary for the maintenance of uh, rail stock and uh, uh, roll. But however, this year only 3,000 crore has been allocated for depreciation reserve fund. That shows the laxity of the rail system and railway safety in India. So we need to improve the rail safety in this country. The age of post-truth politics. Now, the truth is a virtue anywhere in the life. This is the basis for the Gandhiji's struggle and he was able to build a mass action, a huge public action based on the truth. And also it builds in huge social capital. But today, the truth and politics are getting separated from each other. Now here, lying is different and holding the truth is different. But the intention is same, that is to deceive or get the misinterpretation of the fact. So, many of the political leaders or diplomats, when you talk to them, they say that they are not lying but they are holding the truth. And second is, over a period of time, many dimensions of the truth has come into existence. So today, the truth is seen as a perceived truth, an interpreted truth, or a truth, scientific truth, an evidence-based truth. But truth is virtue and it is universal. It has to be only one. So in politics, the truth has been taken different forms to suit the convenience of the narration of an individual. For example, if you talk about lying in politics, if you talk about the Donald Trump's campaign... So there is a huge misinterpretation of the facts and it has been very much publicized in the newspapers but people totally ignored this lying. The reason is the people are also willing to take the truth what they believe or truth in association or in synchronization with their popular belief. So in this context, the truth is getting distorted and truth as a virtue in politics is getting disappeared. And the most worrisome is, the people are getting insensitized for this lying by the politicians. And democracy is today is believed as an argument and making others to convince about your ideas. So here, ideology and truth, these are two different things. A truth is a fact. It, has no another, it cannot have another narrative. But ideology has different narratives and opinions. But the major problem is an ideology is presented as the truth. So in this context, 
if the truth can prevail in the politics and if it is possible generally it can lead to better life among the citizens better uh, trust and confidence among the members in the society that's what is the gandhian values believe in and more than this uh, it is not required but i ask my students to go through this particular essay to get the orientation how to present a philosophical essay so i mean this is more essay perspective go through this particular article now coming to quick fixes for deep rooted issues now remember this statement when the problem is too deep when you make the superficial cosmetic changes that is going to internally erode the system and it kind of can finally lead to death so this is what is happening in india so the problem is very much deep rooted we superficially conceive the treatment and we try to mask the problem which is leading to much deeper erosion so if you see the monetization and demonetization issue in this country it has led to a huge crisis so it has been said india is going through a cashless society or the end of this is to end the uh, corruption terror financing tax evasion in the country these are all laudable objectives but any of the objective has to be guided by a plan of action so in this case objectives are more pronounced but the actions are very much minimal so a journey towards the cashless society it involves getting rid of the cultural uh, enigma on cash let's take this indian society is more uh, preferred to the cash because of various reasons one is the cultural factors non penetration of the banking sector and added to that cash in hand it gives a sense of uh, uh, satisfaction and empowerment so even if you take the sweden japan which are moving towards a cashless societies the cash to gdp ratio even today is very high and added to that coming to tax evasion the cashless transactions and loan cannot lead to tax uh, reduction in tax evasion so the tax evasion has to be curtailed at the very base or at very the source this thing in the last week we have seen this argument the demonetization will only deal with the stock of the cash but not with the flow of the black money it means the black money is bound to arise again with if we do not deal with the administrative processes and systems that are fighting or that are leading to the flow of black money so it means what we need to do if you talk about the real estate sector gold these are the places where the unaccounted money is stocked for so improving the tax structure in india providing for uh, lower rates of the taxation and added to that improving the tax administration in the country and real estate regulation all these are necessary to improve the tax system and coming to this the people also are apprehended about the banking system if you take the lehman brothers collapse etc the value of the money which was stored in the banks got fast eroded and if you take in india inefficiency of the banking system is clearly visible with the rising of npas so in this context how the people believe the banking structure is another question so improving the banking structure is very critical before you move towards the cashless economy and uh, the third thing is the black money or unaccounted money is not just stored in the cash it is also stored in gold and the real estate bringing those sectors under the regulation is also very much important and finally to this a clear plan of action is necessary towards moving to a cashless society an ad hoc approach need to be avoided so the demonetization can be an initiation point it cannot be an end with regard to the achievement of cashless society in india the buck stops with the states this topic is related to land acquisition rehabilitation and resettlement act of india so here we need to study about the article 254 sub clause 2 so according to this on a subject in the concurrent list uh, both the union and state can pass a uh, law but whenever the union passes the law on the same subject then union law will prevail over the state law in the normal circumstances but however there is an exception to this rule when state passes a law and it has been reserved by the governor for the consideration of the president uh, when the law has become or when the bill has become a law with the assent of the president then automatically the state law will prevail over the union law even though union makes a law on that subject the, uh, on the uh, in the union parliament so 
this very provision is said to be misused uh, to circumvent the parliament with regard to the land acquisition bill. So that Mr. J. Ram Ramesh in the last week he has criticized that um, this provision 254 sub clause 2 is given to protect the diversity of the states um, or diverse circumstances that are prevailing in the states. Uh, and uh, the land acquisition rehabilitation resettlement bill amendment bill though introduced in the parliament due to opposition in Rajya Sabha it was not passed. So what the centre is recommending is um, the states shall get the bills passed in their respective legislature and ask the governor to reserve the bill and it comes to the president uh, and president will give the assent. It means whatever is being not passed through the parliament uh, is getting passed through the legislature and it will be uh, getting a legislative sanction through the president assent. So this is said to be circumventing the parliamentary sovereignty. This was the criticism by Mr. J. Ram Ramesh. And the second thing here is, if you observe the Land Acquisition, Rehabilitation and Resettlement Bill it, Act itself, it says that 80% of the people have to uh, agree for the, or give consent for the land acquisition. And uh, in the case of PPPs, uh, it has to be 70%. In the case of private project, it has to be 80%. And the second is, there is social impact assessment. For the government projects, it can be excluded. So, with regard to these stringent systems, uh, land acquisition is said to be the major hindrance for industrial development in the country. The Land Acquisition Rehabilitation Resettlement Act itself, uh, it creates many of the loopholes to circumvent this particular consent and social impact assessment uh, requirements. So, that's what this article is talking about. Now, coming to the news page, Park Risks Isolation in South Asia. The park is a member of the SARC. Any of the SARC in, uh, initiatives for regional connectivity, trade uh, and uh, movement, these are been uh, opposed by the SARC. The uh, critical example for this is Motor Vehicle Agreement, uh, which was opposed by Pakistan. And added to the regional connectivity plan is also been opposed by the Pakistan. So in this context, uh, the sub-regional plans uh, or sub-regional uh, cooperation is growing in India. That is Bo Bhutan, Bangladesh, India, Nepal is one such an example. And also India Sri Lanka has signed a recent co agreement uh, with regard to extending their cooperation till Southeast Asia. So in this, um, the sub-regional cooperation is growing in India and Pakistan has to risk its isolation if it do not come in line with the objectives of common prosperity in the region. And coming to HIV bill. So you know that in India, only 25% of the people living with HIV, they are getting the treatment. The global average is around 41% and most of the people in India are unable to get the treatment because of a lack of understanding of the disease and also of the financial position. The irony is that India is the capital for the supply of HIV drugs and it was made the drugs to fight the HIV across the world but the same did not improve in India. So people living with HIV bill which is being introduced in the parliament to protect their right to privacy has ignored the right to treatment clause of the people with HIV. So the emphasis is on prevention rather than on the treatment. So it means it is ignoring more than million of the people who are suffering from the HIV. Now let's get into Sri Lanka's demonetization issue. So you know that um, India's demonetization issue or uh, exercise has become chaotic uh, due to lack of proper planning. So in this context in 1970 Sri Lanka also did the similar exercise uh, uh, but however it was very well planned and, and uh, carefully executed uh, and people have welcomed such a move. Now if you take in India the same thing the pre-preparatory plan has been uh, uh, not active. So one of the reasons we can also quote is Sri Lanka is a small country to implement the same and India is non, I mean, too big and diverse as a nation. And the second thing is um, the banking sector in 1970s itself is very much well developed in Sri Lanka but the banking sector and financial inclusion are in the nascent stages even in India today. If you talk about the cash transfer scheme, the balls of Emilia scheme, it was very much successful in Brazil, but the cash transfer scheme has its own problems in India because of its size in execution and added to that um, uh, the banking sector and its penetration in India. So these are the articles for today. Thank you very much and all the best. Let's come to the Indian Express today. The Ringmaster Trump. 
Now, if you see the Trump's campaign, it is centered around division and hatred. And there is also distortion tactics which are very much visible. The major point of agenda is getting distorted through use of full language and also bringing unrelated components of the hatred into the main debate. So it means the main policy debate has been diverted to the irrelevant issues surrounding around the hatred etc. So if you see the first, second and third presidential debate, no relevant policies and policy standoff Mr. Trump has been debated. And it is expected to continue in the future in United States politics. And the second important thing is conflict of interest. What do you mean by this? There shall not be any conflict between a personal and a public life of an individual. So in these circumstances, I can say it this way. Mr. Trump owns the Trump business and also recently has settled for Trump University the various suits under the Trump University, a bogus university. So in this case, there is definitely a conflict of interest between his presidency and his personal business. And also his son, daughter and daughter-in-law and uh, son-in-law, these are the part of the Trump's transition team. And these people are expected to take over the Trump's business. Obviously, that also can create a conflict of interest. So the Trump's presidency is going to be filled with controversies and we see how it moves forward. The next article is related to Sharif versus Sharif. Now, the Raheel Sharif of uh, Pakistani army is getting retired this week. So, in this case, with regard to the foreign policy affairs uh, and administration of the nation, the military has an important role in Pakistan. So, the always, in whenever the civilian government has confronted the military, it has led to the wooster of that particular prime minister. In this case, uh, it is a good president that... Um, Whenever this particular chief of the staff and the army chief is leaving without any preconditions. But however, it is hard to believe the same. And he is also getting retired within his term. If you see the last three army chiefs, everyone has got the extension. But the Rahil Sharif has promised he is going to move away from the position without any hindrance. But however, recent attacks on the prime minister, especially from Mr. Imran Khan, and the public outrage from the removal of Raheel Sharif, which is believed to be planned by ISI, shows that uh, there might be some wrong intention to this, whatever be the case. There is a power center in the form of military and civilian government in Pakistan. And India has to make its efforts to strengthen the civilian government uh, against the military. So that's what is the Raja Mohan central point is. Now coming to why trains derail. So this is by the former rail minister, Mr. Dinesh Trivedi. What he says is, if someone has to be blamed for the rail accidents, it has to be successive governments. We have inherited an efficient rail system from the British, but however, we fail to have that in place. The populism and added to that seeing the rail as a commercial business rather than as infrastructure provider. And along with that neglect of infrastructure for the long, these have reduced for the increase, these have reduced the functioning of the railways. So the stock and flow of the railways need to be improved. In this case, there are two funds with the railways, disaster, uh, sorry, depreciation reserve fund and developmental fund. The focus is shifting away from these funds and there are no reserves in them. And the second thing is, the committees are making recommendations, none of these committees are taken seriously. The core functionality of the railways is to transport. But however, this core functionality is getting diverted through by the peripheral functions. And next is there is an excessive focus on the speed with the bullet trains, etc., which may be necessary, but not at the cost of the safety. The safety need to be given due emphasis. And then Merkel reloaded. So Angela Merkel of Germany, she has declared that she is going to fought for another term of elections. After the Trump's victory in United States, Ms. Merkel is more seen as the last defender of a liberal democracy. So in these circumstances, the Merkel's views on immigration and then divides between the people and then free capitalism, all can be applauded, which is more to create an egalitarian society. 
So that's why the Angela Merkel shall be the new emblem for liberal democracy and free trade across the world, especially across the Western societies. And she herself is consolidating position as a representative of the entire Europe rather than the registry representative of Germany. And with regard to facing the Brexit and Grexit, her resolve has been applauded across the European community. So these are the articles for today. Thank you very much and all the best.